We have secret iPad tricks and tips you should know in 2024. Let's get into it. Welcome back. So we had a fun one today. We have some tricks and tips for an iPad over here. And these are ones that you may know a couple of them, but I guarantee you probably won't know the third one. So watch the video. Tell me if you know the third trick. I guess it's a trick or a tip. I don't know what to call it. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the video. Let's get into it. I think I have eight total tips and tricks in 2024. Let's go. So the very first couple of these are gonna be about the keyboard specifically. So here I'm in notes right here. Now let's just say you made a spelling error. If you click on the key over here, let's see how I'm clicking around. See how the cursor moves, but sometimes it's so small on there that it's hard to find where you should click. Sometimes you're kind of sitting like this, moving all around, you can't get in the right spot. There's an easier way. You go down to the actual space bar down here, you click on it and hold it down like this. See that? Now watch the cursor up there. As I, as, as I hold down the actual space bar, I can move the cursor anywhere on the screen. See that? And I can drop it right in between letters just like that. So then I let go and it stays right there. Watch it one more time. There's the cursor. I hold this down. See how everything goes kind of blank. Then I can move this back up and down, even down here, let go. I'm actually at the right spot if I want to correct that letter. And that's how easy it is on here. So just remember that tip. All right, so tip number two on the keyboard is really cool too. A lot of people just don't know this exists. So I have a blank page, right? well, a little blank spot right here. Now let's just say I wanna go ahead and type some numbers in. A lot of times you have to go way over here, click on the numbers, and then you have to type in the numbers, and then you have to click back on the letters. There's an easier way, just if you have to just do a couple you know, quick numbers. All you gotta do is see how the numbers are up here. They're still shown, but they're kind of grayed out. All you gotta do is just hold it and swipe down. Look at that. So you kind of hold it, swipe down. See how it turns into a seven? Hold it, swipe down, that's a six. Now look up here, it's actually putting the numbers in up here. So instead of the P, if I hold it and swipe down, it's a zero. If I hold this and swipe down, that's an eight. You can see the numbers up here. So that's another way of doing it without actually having to click way over here. Actually, I just did the wrong thing. <laughs> click way over here and change it to the numbers. You can basically just go like this, swipe down, and it's gonna put the number there. Just something a lot of people don't know that exists, and it's really easy to do. Alrighty, so this next tip is actually a cool one. So let's assume that you have some kids and you want to give them your iPad. And you want to give them a game, but you don't want them to be able to get out of the game or go anywhere else on the iPad. You want to lock them into that app, you know, the app or the game. You don't want them messing up your iPad, right? There's a good way to do this. So what we want to do here is we want to go in here, and this is obviously settings, and we want to go down to accessibility right there. All right, you got that? What you want to do over here is we go all the way down here, and we want to go to guided access. You can see it right here. I'm going to click on guided access. Now, up here I had it enabled already, but I'm gonna go ahead and shut. So yours will look like this. You wanna go ahead and just enable it. So see how that's enabled now? And that's all you have to do initially. So once that's enabled, you wanna go ahead and just shut this, you know, shut the settings down. So let's just go into a game now. So let's say this is the game that you actually wanna lock them in. Obviously, in this game, they can get out of here, right? They could go like this, get out of the game, go mess up your iPad everywhere. So you wanna keep them from doing that. As soon as you have guided access enabled like we did, Go to the top and click the power button three times, all right? Three times quickly. You're gonna notice that this little screen comes up. In the middle it says guided access. You wanna click on guided access, see that? What it's gonna do is it's gonna give you this little screen and you wanna click start over here, right there. Now it's gonna ask you to enter a passcode. I'm gonna use one that you have to remember. I'm gonna just do one, 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 one. It's gonna ask you to do it again. I'm gonna go one, 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 all right? Now they're in actual guided access, so watch this. You can't get out of this. You can play the game, but you can't get out of it. See that? It's impossible to get out of it. So they, they're stuck in that game. They can't mess up your iPad. When you wanna get out of this, you go back up here, triple click the top button. It's gonna come up with your passcode. Just do the one, 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 one again. And then finally, up here, click end, and they're out of it. So now you can go like this, swipe out, and you're totally fine, they can come out of it now. So just a great way to lock people into an app, not out of an app, but into an app, so that's all they can use. Maybe you're giving it to a friend or something. Really cool. This next tip is really cool if you wanna have your iPad read text back to you. Maybe you're on a website or you wanna just have it read a document to, to you or a book or something. What you wanna do is you wanna go back into accessibility, we're in settings, go to assess, accessibility, again, I can't say that word. You wanna to go to spoken content right there, click on that. So you'll notice in here, you got all these different options. The second one here says, swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen to hear the content of the screen. So you wanna click that second one, speak screen right there. So you wanna go ahead and just put that on like that and now we're all set. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and swipe out of this. So if you go into an area, let's just go into notes right now and let's just go to the top of the notes. So let's say I want this now to recite it back to me. It said swipe down with two fingers, so watch what I do. I'm gonna take two fingers, I'm gonna swipe down, 
M4 iPads. Can you hear it? It might be hard to hear. Why you maybe shouldn't be. Hello and Anyways, it's speaking the whole page to me. It's actually reciting it to me. If you click this here though, and you click X, it'll stop. But again, you can do this on websites. You can do it on anything. It'll speak the whole contents right to you just with two swipes of a finger, just like that. M4 iPads. Is anybody ex I'm gonna stop it. I don't know if you could hear that because I have my microphone turned, but it was speaking it. You can do that with websites. With websites, though, it's sometimes you want to go ahead and do reader view because it might get the whole like kind of HTML stuff. It might recite back to you as well. But with this kind of document, it works perfectly. All right, for this next one, it's pretty interesting. So I have basically ESPN over here, which is a browser. I have split screen right now, and then I have my notes app over here. So there's actually something called show text built into iPads and stuff like that. If you see an image on a website like this, you can go ahead, see where it says Atlanta right there. It's that little small area. I can actually click on that for a second. Let me just do it again like this. It's gonna highlight the text, see that? It highlighted his jersey right where that text is. You can go ahead and click copy over here. So now it's copied the text to the clipboard. Now over here, if I just go like this and click on, I can go ahead and, well actually, let me just do this again. I can go like this, paste it right there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. But you can see how it just took the text off his jersey and made it go to the, my notes app over here. You can copy text from images, which is really cool. And also, if you click this again, you can also go ahead and sometimes and translate it. Let me see, there's a translate, so if it's basically in a foreign language, you can translate into English and then move it over to your, to your notes as well. So just a really cool feature that's built into you know, the iPad that a lot of people do not know about. For this next one, now I talked about pressing the power button three times for the last one, but you can actually tell your iPad what that will actually do. You can actually program what that button is. So that's really easy. Let me just show you how to do that. You wanna go back into your settings here and right back to accessibility. It seems like everything's under there. Now what we wanna do is scroll all the way down and what you wanna do is go down to accessibility shortcut right there. So let me actually go back there, accessibility shortcut right there. Now inside of here it says triple click the top button three times for any, any of these things to happen. So you can go in here and actually have it do any of these different tasks by clicking this up here three times in a row. And you can go ahead and change that. So let's say you wanted to you know, switch controls or voice control. There's a lot of things you can do there. Zoom, if you wanna go ahead and just program that button, you can do it right through this little accessibility shortcut. I just thought it was pretty cool. And then finally, the last thing, this is not really even a big tip at all, but just, just so you know, if you actually wanna go ahead and change the settings, there's a whole bunch of settings built into the keyboard. The easiest way is just go over to the emoji, hold it down like this, click on keyboard settings, and you can go ahead and change them all. So just hold the emoji down, keyboard settings, and then you can go ahead and just change it to your know, heart's content in here. You can obviously go in the menu here. Some people just can't find it, it's hard for them. That's the easiest way, hold down the emoji. All right, so I might do a couple more and then maybe another video. This is getting long, but here's the last one here. So let's just say you're in the keyboard again. I forgot this one on the keyboard. So let's say we're in notes here and the keyboard comes up. A lot of people think that this is gonna be, you know, the keyboard's way too big. Let's say you have multiple apps up and you're trying to kind of go between them. The keyboard's taking up way too much space. All you really have to do is go like this, watch. You kind of just, like you would be going on, on a map or something. You pinch in, watch what happens. I pinch in, the keyboard will go to a different size, really small. You can actually grab it at the bottom like this, and you can move it anywhere on the screen that you want it to. I just moved the whole iPad there. So there you go. If you want it to go get back big again, you can actually zoom out like this with your fingers, just like that. It'll drop back down to the normal position, and there it is. So always go like this. If you want a small keyboard, you can move it wherever you want. If you want a big one, you can go like that. Just something that people don't even know exists. All right, so what do you think? Did you guys know the third one? Post in the comments which of these you knew, which you didn't know. The first couple are really easy, but a ton of people just don't know they exist. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up the video. Please subscribe if you can. I do videos, I have over 650 Mac-related videos. I do reviews of all tech products. I do kind of training videos like this, and I do fun videos on the weekends where I, you know, I have a beer and we go through a whole bunch of Apple news. Subscribe if you can, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.